Ladies and gentlemen, good morning to you all. And I'm very pleased to address the heat pump community of Europe today. <clears throat> Since the start of this commission, the European Green Deal um, and our commitment to climate neutrality by 2050 has been our top priority. And throughout the energy crisis, the Green Deal remained a cornerstone of our response, helping to steer our union towards um, a remarkable recovery. And today, um, we are more committed than ever to the deployment of renewables and um, the clean energy transition. It's how we'll make good on our climate goals. It's also how we'll secure our long-term energy sovereignty. Um, so when it comes to the heating sector, we have a clear challenge. Heating and cooling accounts for about 50% of all energy consumed today in the EU. And yet more than 70% of heating is still based on fossil fuels, mostly natural gas. And everybody understands that it has to change. Uh, the future of heating in households does not lie in fossil fuel combustion. Uh, it lies in technologies based on renewable energy sources, as well as efficient district heating and cooling. Heat pumps, in particular, are ready to become a mainstream heating technology. Uh, their uh, rollout should uh, be part of uh, local, but also regional and national heating and cooling plans. And uh, their deployment should become uh, come with flexibility to adjust to the needs and the constraints of buildings, but also industries and networks. And I ask you to think about everything heat pumps have to offer. Um, they are a leading and mature technology for decarbonizing buildings, district heating networks, and also more and more in industry. They are recognized for being highly efficient and making greater use of renewable energy sources. And uh, they have a promising role as an asset to ensure grid stability and balancing. The heating sector is um, certainly changing. In 2022, almost 3 million new heat pump units were installed. Um, but even this is not enough. Uh, policymakers and uh, markets need a clear long-term vision to bring consumers on board, which is why we need to step on the accelerator and speed up the rollout of heat pumps, uh, be it standalone or as a part of efficient district heating and cooling. And uh, I welcome all the efforts made by the European Heat Pump Association. The Commission uh, will continue to play its part two. Uh, let me briefly outline our work to date and uh, how we will continue driving forward a quick deployment of heat pumps. Our Fit for 55 package uh, was the first step to decarbonize our economies across this, all sectors. Um, then Repower EU accelerated the transition and uh, called for doubling current deployment rates of building heat pumps. Uh, thanks to a number of different initiatives, we have paving the way for more clean heating solutions such as heat pumps. Um, the energy performance of buildings directive is designed to help phasing out fossil fuel appliances at national level and sets a new standard for zero emission buildings. And I'm convinced that uh, co-legislators will rapidly come to an agreement on this important piece of uh, the Fit for 55 package. And with a recently adopted uh, energy efficiency directive, member states uh, have important tools to map the heating and cooling demands and to promote new heating solutions, including heat pumps. This uh, recast of EED sets out a plan for decarbonizing our 17,000 district heating system, uh, serving approximately 60 million people in the EU. And the revised renewable energy directive uh, introduces new ambitious targets for renewable energy in general, and uh, more specifically for renewables in heating and cooling uh, for the first time with binding national targets and in buildings um, and the industry. We are also in the process of um, reviewing the eco-design implementing regulation for space heaters 
uh, one consideration is to have an end date for standalone fossil boilers. Another important strand of work are our efforts to boost Europe's clean tech manufacturing base. And our Net Zero Industry Act proposal uh, designs a new policy approach, one that helps our clean tech industry stay and grow here in Europe. Um, we want to create the right conditions for investment um, so that um, net zero technology manufacturing uh, will remain here. And we want to ensure the union is well equipped for the clean energy transition. Heat pumps are one of the technologies supported by the Act. And finally, one last word on the Heat Pump Action Plan. As you all know, um, this is currently in the making. Uh, we expect it uh, to come out after the adoption of the Energy Performance of Buildings Directive. Uh, within this framework, we want to speed up um, the rollout of heat pumps and lay the groundwork for heat pumps progressively becoming the new boiler. Um, I know many of you here today have been very active in the public consultation process, and uh, I want to thank you for all these contributions um, and for sharing your valuable experience, and um, this really uh, was a necessary process, um, because without uh, receiving feedback from the ground, um, the action plan would not serve its purpose. So, we have received feedback on a wide range of issues, um, the policy landscape, um, technological preparedness, uh, research and innovation needs, um, grid system preparedness and development, um, and also social innovation and public support. And we have heard that um, to meet heat pump deployment targets under Repower EU, we will need uh, an additional 750,000 installers in 2030. Um, this is an increase of 50% compared to today. And at least 50% of existing installers will have to be reskilled to work with heat, pump, um, heat pumps. Um, the action plan will uh, center on four pillars. Partnership, communications and skills, continuity, and financing. Partnership, um, because we need a broad heat pump partnership between industry, the European Commission, EU financial institutions, EU member states and regions, research and uh, training institutes, and other stakeholders. And this will foster cooperation and um, help bring to life the long-term vision for the accelerated rollout of heat pumps. Communication and skills because um, we know how important it is to raise awareness with citizens um, and small industries. Um, they need to hear more about the technology and its different applications and solutions, as well as op upfront and operational costs. Uh, the focus will also be on national support and a heat pump skills partnership to lay down a um, competency framework for heat pump professionals. And continuity, because uh, implementation of ongoing legislative and policy developments will be critical to heat pump deployment. And finally, financing, because we understand uh, the need for more accessible financing. Ladies and gentlemen, um, the action plan uh, will be a first step. I cannot emphasize enough uh, how important your support will be in making this uh, vision a reality. Um, we need your sustained engagement if we are to put in place the supportive operational framework for the rollout of clean heating and cooling solutions um, and tailor it to the different member states. And we need the sustained engagement of all market actors be it uh, national, regional, local authorities. Um, so I look forward to working together as we continue to accelerate the rollout of the heat pumps and uh, build a greener and cleaner and um, future-proof energy system for all Europeans. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Commissioner Simpson. Uh, in the light sense of time, you have to meet other people this morning. We thank you very much for coming and making the effort of coming from the Commission down here because that's actually not easy, as we have learned. Um, and we are really looking forward to cooperating in the future to, as you say, build a sustainable energy system for all Europeans. I will note that uh, final remarks of yours. Thank you.